right, everybody, I'd like to welcome you to the second annual Music Business Roundtable. It's going to be a Studio 300 event sponsored by Fountaindale Library in Bolingbrook. Um, go ahead, give us a hand, do something. Put your hands together, <laughs> get excited. <laughs> All right. So, uh, pretty much it's going to be a uh, roundtable where um, you have a couple of music industry insiders that are going to be telling you about the business, um, some experiences they've had um, in the studio, on the road, all that good stuff. Um, you'll also be, have a chance to ask them a, few, a couple of questions at the end, um, something that you may have been boiling on your mind as far as the music industry goes. So, without further ado, let me go ahead and introduce you to the uh, panelists. So... To your left, right there with the mean mug on his face for some reason, we have Mr. Roger, don't call me Milton Willis. He's actually returning for the second time for the music business panel. You're going to pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> so basically his uh, expertise is in music mixing and mastering. Um, some of his accomplishments uh, include he's actually been nominated for a Grammy in 2017. He's actually up for four Grammys uh, this year as well. Nice. Some of the people that he's actually collaborated with include, include Kirk Franklin, uh, Donnie McClurkin, John P. Key, J.J. Hairston, uh, Micah, Micah Stampley, and Tasha Cobbs. Um, he would also like you, know, like you to know, because he's wearing the hat, that he's actually a, a Grammy voting member as well. <laughs> Some of the most recent projects that he's worked on include uh, Todd Dulaney's Your Great Name, uh, Vashon Mitchell's Cross Music, and J.J. Hairston's You Deserve It. All right, and to his immediate left, Mr. Cedric Kraut. He is, um, yeah. <laughs> he is in live music production. Uh, some of his accomplishments include uh, one big one that he's actually performed at the White House with Miss uh, Mary J. Blige, MJB Queen of R&B. Nice. Um, one of his most recent projects that he's worked on is he actually did a 20-month world tour with Clint Kendrick Lamar. Um, nice. And also, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can give a bigger hand clap for that. <laughs> All right, and last but not least, we have Mr. David Mitchell. Um, his area of expertise... His area of expertise includes uh, audio, uh, live and studio, mixing and producing. Uh, some of his accomplishments include that one of the, is he's been credited for engineering on a gold record for international songs. He's also done pre-production with Grammy Award nominated producer Steve Silk Hurley. If you don't know who Steve Silk Hurley is, he's the one that created house music. <laughs> or he's the, he's, at least he's the reason why it's so big in Chicago. <laughs> so every time you hear all the um, house music on WGCI, that's who you have to think. <laughs> Um, <laughs> he's also done a, he does a writing performance on three album project produced by the late Morris Butch Stewart. And one of the most recent projects that he's worked on is uh, recently writing and co-producing a jingle for a new client with the phenomenal Leslie Stewart of Lavish Music Group. Mm -hmm. All right, so without further ado, give, hand, give a hand for the professionals and we can get this started. Yourself, man. Yeah, who are you? <laughs> and I'm your host. This is Justin Clash. <laughs> Hi, I'm your host. I work at the library. <laughs> All right. So, um, to get things started, um, I consider you guys, yeah, basically. <laughs> so, um, one of the things I'd like to know, and I'm sure everybody wants to know, is since you, I consider you guys heavyweights in the music industry, um, what made you first get into music, period, and or as far as like getting yourself in the music industry? As a kid, I always loved music. You know, um, I never thought I would be in this part of the music industry production. Uh, I played drums as a kid, so I thought I would always be a drummer. But I never knew that it was something bigger than church, you know, until I got out in the world and... And um, it started doing that. So basically, in the production side, I got thrown in the fire. So I came out to help a friend for like a month. And then I looked up three years later, and I realized I hadn't been home. So And i just been out ever since then. You know, so that's how it happened for me. And for me, um, I was about six when... I remember my dad, <clears throat> just like a lot of families, they listen to music, either parties or cleaning up or whatever and things like that. And 
Uh, my dad bought a uh, a bass guitar from like a pawn shop, and uh, he was trying to get. I don't know what bass line he was trying to get, but he was this one song forever, and I didn't know that other people. I thought that just the people the bands and things that we listen to could play instruments. I didn't know that it was like out here. Like, I was like, what is that? Like, why do you have that? And stuff like that. And, you know, but for me, it was about, I was about age six. And, uh, and I heard Michael Jackson, uh, off the wall record, uh, namely the song can't help it, uh, written by the, uh, amazing, uh, Stevie wonder, uh, at that time, I fell in love with baseball at first, but I fell in love with music when I heard that song because I couldn't tell you the feeling that I got, and all great songs have a great feeling. And I was like, whatever is giving me this feeling, I got to be around it. Yeah. And, um, and at, at age six, I started reading album credits. I still do to this day to see who was responsible for making this sound. So, I mean, at age six, I memorized it. You know, Quincy Jones, mixed by Bruce Woodin, um, horn arrangements by Jerry Hay, and start seeing those, these same names on other records. I'm like, wait, 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 I saw that. And my dad can tell you, like, uh, I would look at this. So he did this and he did this. So, I mean, just knowing that feeling and getting back to the basic of the feeling uh, of what this music uh, made me feel like. I said, at that point, Whatever producing is, I got to do it. Yeah. I got to be in it. For me, uh, wow, uh, it, it was a, an arduous journey. Um, I shouldn't say that. I, I have an aerospace degree. And for me, wow. music was a, was a hobby. And through, you know, going through mergers and acquisitions, working with companies and things of that nature, I found myself ultimately... In 2006, uh, out of a job after having been vice presidents of companies and things of this nature, and but music was always a hobby all the way back from my college days, mm -hmm. and so um, through through the years, I would be buying all this equipment and learning, and you know this is my hobby, which really was my passion, and I, you know, took a took a hobby. My hobby became my occupation. Mm -hmm. Um, it was the thing that I was most passionate about, and I started recording in 2003, and I started mastering professionally in 2010, and I just never stopped. And I've been a full-time self-employed mastering, mixing, recording engineer since since 2006. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like the short short story. A top. Recording engineer. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say top. <laughs> I right, right, right. Close. Right. Close. <laughs> Important detail. Right. I wouldn't say that. I'd so. be in Burr Ridge. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. So one of the things that's interesting to note is like you guys all had a start um, as far as getting into the music industry. I'm sure um, all of you had some help, um, whether it was from like a mentor or somebody who you considered a peer, uh, a peer, peer. Can you say that right, peer? And um, one of the things um, everybody would probably like to know is um, how significant it is it to like build a team or have a team or have people that you can depend on um, in trying to like put yourself out there or establish a music career. Uh, for me, I can't really say I had a mentor. Um, I had people that opened doors for me, mm -hmm. but. When doors are open, that doesn't mean they're easy to walk through. That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay? Just because it's open, there's all sorts of hindrances. There's doubt in your mind that, yep. you know, whether you can even do, you know, the thing that's on the other side of that door. Mm -hmm. And we were talking earlier, and I said, you know, sometimes, you know, we're, we're faced with opportunities that may never come again. That's right. And sometimes you have to be prepared to take that leap oh, and yeah. believe in yourself that you can actually do was being asked of you, perhaps even if you've never even done it. Yeah. You know, so it's it's a it's a inner strength, it's an inner belief in yourself that you can do something. Now it is definitely uh, really important to to establish strong relationships in this business mm -hmm. because who you are and your reputation uh, precedes you. It's in front of you. It's sure. out there uh, before you even get there. You know, mm -hmm. so 
Um, but it, for me, I didn't really have a mentor. I, I just, I'm a hard charger. When I, when I take a leap, I'm going hard in the paint. So. <laughs> well, 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 for me, well, you pretty much said everything I was going to say, but I did have a mentor when I was coming up, um, the late, great Tony Sheldon. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. took, took me on his wing when I was a kid, you know, and, and uh, kept me off the streets and um, kind of guided me to pretty much where I am now, you know. But um, as, as far as uh, Roger was saying about um, uh, passing up opportunities, I've gotten calls where somebody said, hey, can you come out, can you leave tonight or in two hours and do such and such job? And I've never done this job before, but I'll be on my phone on YouTube or Googling trying to figure out what the job is while I'm there. And by the time I land, I've been on all the information I need to get started and then learn everything else on the fly. So don't never tell nobody what you can't do, you know, and you get out there and figure it out. If you get fired, you know, just learn from it and then start all over again, you know. You can blame Cedric. Yeah, yeah, blame <laughs> <laughs> You can blame me. You know, nobody knows me, so it doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> But but yeah, Roger is 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 one hundred percent right. Like yeah. your 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 reputation precedes you. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's, it's very important. People will never meet you a day in your life, but they will know about you. Mm -hmm. They will research you. They will ask about you. You know, so pay attention. Treat everybody right. You yeah. know, treat everybody like you want to be treated. Yeah. You know, and and it all comes back around to you. You know, mm -hmm. if you be a jerk, nobody wants to work with a jerk. You'll be at home. You know, so yeah, integrity is everything. It's a right. small world. Yes. It really is. Yeah. You, you you think that uh, pardon the interruption. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> you you think that, you know, it's like no one in California or no one in, you know, Hampton, Virginia could possibly know me. Right. And yeah. That is not true. Some, somebody knows you. Yeah. Or they're familiar with what you do. And um, so I can't stress enough how important um, your integrity is. You know, it, it has to be at the at the highest level. Uh, for you to be successful because gifts I'll say this and I'll stop gifts open doors for you because mm -hmm. you're great at what you do mm -hmm. but your lack of integrity your lack of honor your lack of you know uh, timeliness and being where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be that those very things will close the same doors that your gift opened yes please talk about it it's, 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 it's um, uh, anybody can open the door for you but it's up to you to stay in that door mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. you know and and the music industry is a huge is is a huge is a huge industry, but it's a small community. Yeah, you know, so everybody knows everybody. And even if everybody don't know everybody, everybody knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. You know, like we were sitting there talking, you know, and and he was like he was talking about his experience on his last trip, and he started talking as well, and they just figured out that they know the same people. You know, so you you, you never know. You know. <laughs> So you got to be careful of what you say and yeah. how you act and how you present yourself at all times. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, and and that goes; those principles work across the board in business, in life, in music, in art, in parenting, in in everything. Um, there are things that that you will do and things that you can learn uh, from a mentor, from somebody either directly or indirectly, through a book, through a video, however you learn. Um, the best way is to, one, learn how you learn, uh, whether uh, auditory, through conversation, video, or reading, or something like that. Um, I, there are so many people that I've learned just a nugget from that I will never meet and shake, shake hands in, in person. But reading their story or watching an interview or something like that. But uh, I, I love mentors. I love to learn uh, from people. Uh, there are people that I've directly learned from, Tony Sheldon, John King. Uh, we, can, we, can, we can roll a bunch of names and, uh, and things like that that it may be for a season. It may be for a time. It may be something just for you to learn to get you to the next step. And, uh, but it's all on you. Once you take that step to to say yes and take that step to take that job and take this this position or to follow this this dream and uh, that moves you to another place that a, now a resource can come for you as like a mentor or like this program or like uh, anything that that you can learn from. But I absolutely love mentorship uh, because if I can learn what took this man 
40 years or 10 years to learn and learn that in four weeks, hmm. <laughs> please know I'm going to do that. <laughs> so I can learn, I can learn everything, the good, bad, and the ugly. I can learn his mistakes, her mistakes. I can learn uh, what not to do, how to treat clients, how to know the business side of music. Uh, Cause the art just like, and I can't echo y'all enough. Like the art is one thing, but the character is going to keep you there. Oh, yeah. Like, okay, you can be talented all day, but if you a pain to work with, guess what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there's stories on top of story. I can tell you, you know, a few stories and things like that, that, that people were, they were trying to show off all their chops and things like that. And yeah, let me show this and this when the person, I just, I, I just need you to do this and this and this. Okay. Yeah. But I can do all of this, but that's not what I asked you. So number one, you ain't listening. All right. <laughs> so that's, that's a big thing is to uh, know who you're in front of from, from a artist or a client stand, standpoint. And from there, uh, now it's not about you because your purpose and your path is bigger than you. Yeah. So you submit to it. And what you, what you choose, what you seem to choose, it actually chooses you because of your temperament, your, uh, your path and, and the things that you've learned and, and what you can get out of it. It chooses you knowing that he and she, they're going to be faithful to this. Mm -hmm. They're going to do this or what have you. But there are things that you will go through uh, that will test you to see if you really want this. And it's not going to always be easy. Yeah. It won't. Okay? <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> one, please one, bank on that. One other thing, I want to correct the, my answer to the question about did I have a mentor. I have virtual mentors. Right. Uh, yeah. There are great <laughs> mastering engineers that I study. Mm -hmm. I study everything about them. And if I ever met them, they'd probably be freaked out because I know everything there is to know about That's them. Right. I know their children's names. Yeah. I know where they live. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's, I know, he, he's a low-key stalker. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know everything about them. And it's because I appreciate their work, their body of work, and who they are. Mm. And I study them from afar because I'll probably, you know, in some of those cases, never, ever get the chance to yeah. you know, become an understudy of these individuals. So, yeah. I, I did have virtual mentor mentors, and there are definitely people in the industry that I study their work, sure. and I try to reverse engineer it as best I can. And hopefully, one day, I'll be able to uh, show them and tell them how much I appreciate their work and and what they mean to me and what I learn from them yeah. virtually. Okay. So, on the same token. Um, what would you say are some of the roles that the people play that are instrumental in your success as far as like day-to-day -day operations, things that you normally do, or your art form, your... Um, again, building strong relationships with people. Uh, again, last, last week, well, a little over a week ago, I had a trip in Nashville. I had to go to uh, Nashville for some work. And while in Nashville, it, it, whenever I travel, I try to uh, forge relationships with people and increase my circle uh, uh, as much as possible. And I met a couple of people, and before I could get on the plane back to Chicago, I had already received work from these people. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had, in short order, investigated who I am and what I've done, and, and I, I, I wasn't even off the, you know, on the plane before I was getting text messages. And even today, I got you know something that was completely unexpected from an artist that I've long wanted to work with. Mm -hmm. And five minutes before I was leaving to come here, I got some work from this person. And so it's really, and this is where the integrity, key, you know, I'm, you're going to hear this a lot. Um, when you establish yourself as a reliable, you know, person uh, with high standards, yeah. um, and the goal for me has always been to exceed the expectation of the person I'm working with. Oh, yes. If I say, if they say, yeah, give it to me tomorrow, I'm probably going to give it to you tonight. <clears throat> You know, so it's, you be you build that reputation that hey, this guy is reliable. He's he's gonna do what he says he's gonna do. He's gonna be where he says he's gonna be, and he never fails. Uh, you know, I'm honest with my customers. I don't set myself up for failure by saying I can do something t tonight. If I can't do it tonight, I'm gonna say, well, I'll do my best. Right. You know, I'll try to get it for you tonight. But but yeah, you know, in answer to the question. Mm -hmm. Well, I need to start going first because Roger is taking all my answers. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, ditto to every, everything he just said, but I want to go first next. <laughs> Can I just ask real quick, uh, is everybody artists here? Like, who are we talking to? Uh, everybody artists here or? 
You got artists, producers, okay. writers. Producer, creator, director. Nice. Okay. Okay, good. I, I just like to know know who I'm talking to. Um, yeah, I'm an artist, singer, songwriter, but do a little recording and uh, play out and about just a little bit. Play as in? Uh, guitar. Nice. Good. Sing. Good. Good, good. Uh, refresh me on the question, bro. Um, <laughs> I need you to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the roles that uh, people have played that are instrumental in your success on your like day to day operations or the work you do in your art form. Mm. Oh, for sure. Someone that you pretty much on your team that you know know has uh, is critical. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or has yeah, been critical. My, yeah, my my business partner for sure. Uh, and that's going back to what what I was saying earlier, knowing. Knowing yourself, self-awareness, know what, what you do well, and delegate what you don't. Go all chips in on your strengths. What do you do well? If that's uh, you're creative and things like that, but you're not administrative, then don't do it. Then do, do, what, do what you do well and things like that because the resources, everything that you need is within your reach. And if you can't reach it, you don't need it. So in a person that's near you, uh, they may have the, the strength that you don't. They may be great at, uh, at administrative or they're great at writing things or putting structure to things to whereas you're great. Like I know I can come up with an idea and, and help you uh, forge that idea and be like, okay, here's what we can do. We can name it this. We can try, I can give you all of that. But as far as now the back office work, okay, let me just show it in a pie chart and all like that. No, you, you don't want me to do that because <laughs> it will take forever because that's not, I'm not good at that. But I have people that, um, that are. And, and that's, it's the same way with everybody in here. Everybody has a gift, number one. Yeah. Two, uh, that there is something that, uh, that you will do, and usually it's one thing. It's kind of like uh, a bicycle wheel. The bicycle wheel has a hub in the middle, and now you have spokes coming off of it. So uh, I own a company called Renew My Music and Media Group. So it is a independent uh, record label, a media group, an ad agency, uh, business uh, consulting, and things of that nature. We do documentaries, commercials, um, voiceover, music. Uh, for film and things of, things of that nature. Now, from that, uh, there are other entities and things like that. The more time that I've spent with this, I've got that vision. I was still in high school in, in 1992. I'll help you with the you math. That's 26 like years. Ninety-two. <laughs> <laughs> but from that point, because because I believe in it and I see it, just like I see you all in this room. I didn't. I didn't quit. Just like we talked about earlier, uh, there is there is a, a life purpose that that you have, and there's something that that you're everybody in this room is meant to do, that will take you uh, to places that you wouldn't have planned on going. But they have to figure it out. You have to figure out what it is. You, you got know? to figure it out. I know right now. Yeah, and and that one thing there is layers to it. Yeah. So once you spend time with that and and are faithful to it, then other things will open up. So, uh, so yeah, they're, they're absolutely critical uh, people that you have to have around you, uh, things that you don't do. That's going to uh, you accountable. Yeah, 100%. To keep you accountable, to keep you saying, okay, I want to be a musician, like, really quick. I have, I have a, uh, a young guy that I work with in Los Angeles. He is 23. He wants to, you know, travel and do his music. Now, he wants it now. Like, he wants it, like, Oh well, oh, this job or whatever. I said, hold up. Let me let me let me explain something to you. <laughs> this job you have is to give you disciplines and things like that to, in order for you to move to the thing you want to do. You got to do what you got to do in order to do what you want to do. You want it today, but here's the thing. I said, you got to work what's in your hand first. What do you have to do now? See, if you're not disciplined with this job, you're not going to be disciplined in that. Hundred percent. And, you know, it took him a while to kind of understand that because he it was all about him. I want to. No, no, you, you're going to do this to serve the world around you. And 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 <laughs> man, I, I told one person, uh, he said, well, Dave, what's it like, you know, having your own business? But 
you know, you work for somebody else. I said, let me, let me explain something else to you. I said, when you have a business, you are thinking about it on Christmas. Please believe. Yeah. When you're an entrepreneur, you're not chilling. Okay, this is not, yeah, I want a business and whatever, and now you you sitting back coasting. No, you, you're thinking about it. It's on your mind. You think about it more than your employees because it's your baby. And nobody's going to go hard for your child. Those are parents in here. Nobody's going to go hard for your child like you. Same thing in, in, in music, same thing in business. You're going to go hard for the thing that you believe in, that you see. I love this music, and I want to see it through. And I, there's, there's these songs, and there's things that, that I want to see happen. And you have to hold that and carry that through the tough times because it will get tough. Yes, but the, the greatness on the other side of that, yes, on the other side of that, man, let me just follow. Let me just chase the curiosity. Let me just... Let me just take this job. I, I don't know what's on the other side of that. So now this guy's all over the world because he said yes. Hope that answers. And, 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 and then, yeah, like I'm add, yeah but um, <laughs> it, it don't matter what, what level you are right now. You have to be faithful and committed to what, where you are right now in order to be elevated and trusted with more, yep, you absolutely. know. Like I started out as a little kid playing drums in the basement, you know, and but I took Same that here. serious. Same here. And then uh, I – the drum at church. I took that serious. I was hours early before church, make sure my drums were, were right, tuned, and stuff like that. You know, and by me taking that serious, that elevated me to a whole nother level. And then I, get, I took that serious, even more serious, and that took me to a whole nother level. You know, so you have to be faithful. You have to give 200% all the time because you never know who's around. You never know who's watching, you know? Yeah. So. Success comes from doing the things that other people won't do. Yeah. Yes, sir. You can be great. There, Everybody in this room can be great, but what's going to differ differentiate you among all the people in this room are the little things that you're going to do that the next guy sitting next to you is not going to do. They're going to laugh at because they think it's uh, funny. You know, yeah. it's it's a it's an immersion into what you do. It's like I live, sleep, breathe. This is what I do. This is where my passion lies. Um, so I just kind of want to just add that so we can get to the next question. <laughs> man, I, I, I used to, man, people used to laugh at me because I used to walk to church from Longan Lake to Mars Hill on Austin Lake because yeah. I couldn't afford to ride the train. Yep. But I had my cymbal bag in one hand. I had a piccolo with no bag but with strings hanging so from it. And I, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I walked to church every Sunday. I had to be at, at 8 o'clock at 10 o'clock service. I would leave the house at 8 o'clock, mm -hmm. you know, but I would walk. But people never understood why. You know, I yeah. love what I did. You know, yeah. as far as getting yourself out there, because obviously you had to make these connections, uh, get yourself known. What were some of the methods that were successful for you guys as far as getting your name out there? Keep taking my answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, today is a different day. Uh, social media is the way of the world right now. Yeah. So, um, but a lot of people use it for the wrong reasons, you know. So, you have to u utilize it for what you're trying to do, you know. Like, if you want to be a drummer, showcase the stuff that you're doing, and not just showcase like the good stuff that you do. Show the whole process so yeah. people can see the whole process. Because even though you think you're nobody and you're not the way you're supposed to be, it's somebody that's not even in that position. So they they're learning from you as well too. So yeah. that that's the whole process. But for me, it was. Um, just doing what I was supposed to do, you know, and 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 waited for somebody to acknowledge or see what I had to offer and then let it go from there. Like, I trust the process. I trust God, you know, mm -hmm. so that's how it worked for me, you know. But but a lot, a lot of people aren't in church, so a lot of people have different beliefs. But if you're not a believer, you know, just like YouTube and Facebook and all of that stuff, you know, like – Whatever you do, if you sing, get on there and sing for it. You'll be surprised. If you go on Facebook now, it's guys on there who hold sessions every day. They like they they get on there, they're singing, and then they invite people on to sing too, and they have thousands and thousands of followers just for people singing. So if that if you're a singer, you can do the same thing, and you can get your face out there like that. You'll be surprised who'll come on your on your live, you know, stuff like that. You know, people watch everything. A lot of people scout talent on social media. YouTube, so sure. you got to be very mindful of that and utilize that. Right. Um, <clears throat> I'll go back to something I said earlier. For what I do as a mastering engineer, I'm not out there as a musician. I'm not out there as a producer. 
I'm not out there as, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not the face. I'm, I'm the behind the scenes guy. Mm -hmm. So it's a little more difficult for me in that respect. But what's really important in, in anything you do is during those down times or when you're not where you want to be, mm -hmm. you must master your craft. Oh, yeah. All the time. It's very important. Always a student. You know, you always have to be a student. It's like, watch some YouTube videos, join some forums, read a book, go you know, see people and see how they do what they do. So that when those opportunities come, even though you think you might not be ready, you're probably much more ready than you think. So that you're able to capitalize on those opportunities because why? Because you put in the work behind the scenes. And so for a guy like me, what I do is sort of like a barbershop salon relationship. Once you get a person to cut your hair, you don't really want to change. Sure. And so, it, so trying to, me trying to penetrate that business, it's a little more difficult. So when I do get those opportunities, I had to knock them out the park. Mm -hmm. And once I was able to start doing that, and I, and I had some failures along the way. You know, I mean, I crashed and burned, you know, and got fired, you know, or whatever. But I, I took what I learned from that experience, and, it, and, I let it, and I let it fuel me for the next one. I'm like, okay, I won't make that mistake again. Yep. Let me learn from this, and let me, you know, be prepared for it. Now, I, I, I didn't even anticipate what happened happening. I didn't anticipate the possibility and the range of personalities and types that I'm dealing with. So I, I took those things, and I fueled it, but it's, it's really – very important to master your craft. Yeah. Do the things that nobody else will do. You know, just do those things. And as you forge those relationships, the door will start saying, hey, I heard about this mastering guy, Roger, in Chicago. You know, have you worked with him? And then it's somebody will say, yeah, man, I worked with him. He was cool. Cool. You know, it's like I need an emergency. My normal barber yeah. is not available. You know, and that's your door right there. And that's the door. Yeah. And when you get to that door, you got to walk through that door. But, but but the the funny part about that is I'm a firm believer of um, uh, you're not gonna know everything when you get that call. Most of the stuff you're gonna learn, you're gonna learn on the fly, out in the field. So just just prepare as much as you can, learn as much as you can before that that call comes. And then when you get out there, don't go out there acting like you know everything. You still have to be uh, observant and watch everything because you still gotta. It's not it's not about you. You got to be able to get along with other people at the same time too. So you got to watch how other people move. Like with me, I'm on the bus with 11 other people on the tour bus. So. I can't, I have to be mindful of how everybody moves because we're in a small space, so you have to respect every, everybody's space. So it's not just about you learning at home. You have to learn out on the road as well, too, so. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, yeah, your, your, we your gift. You was gonna say? <laughs> 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 yes, you did. Uh, your, your gift makes room for you. Yes. Absolutely. And it makes room, not you. So you are a carrier of the gift. Like this water is the, the content. I don't care what the bottle is, what the cup is, anything like that. I wanted the water. So you, your craft is the, is the container holding the content. Your, con your content is the gift. So the gift makes room for you to get in these places and whatever these places are. And only you can define that. Yeah. Only you can define what success is for you. Not anybody else, not comparing likes and somebody has this many followers. It don't matter. At the end of the day, what are you doing to better the world around you using your gifts and talents? Because it's about that. And that makes a room so that it looks like, well, uh, so-and-so, uh, we, we need a drummer now or what have you. Now that, that door will open up and you will be at the time and you will be at the place if you are faithful to, to what you're doing, having the craft, learning and respecting the business and respecting music. Hello, let's talk about respect. <laughs> respecting the, the business and respecting yourself. Like, okay, there's something I see for myself and I'm sticking to that. I'm not a gimmick. I'm not this, that, and the other. I know who I am and I know I'm going to stay faithful to that. Yeah. And that will draw opportunities. That will bring it to you because because of your belief. So all of your your image is is called the law of attraction. Number 1, 2, it's the law of recognition. Yeah. Once you recognize an opportunity that comes like, man, this guy earlier said he needed a drummer. Let me talk to him after this session is done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
See what I'm saying? Like that's that's how it works. It's a it's a system, and there are principles whether you're a believer or not. There are certain principles that work oh, without yeah. spiritual ascent. Oh, yeah. So gravity just works. Yeah. Don't believe it? Get on top of this building. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there are things that just work. Now, and they work if you work them. Knowing your gift and knowing uh, that I have to get better now. You have not heard the word perfect from any one of us at all nope. because that don't even exist. Nope. Come on, man. But you can be sincere in knowing that, okay, I really want to do this in music. I really want to do this in film or, or whatever. And once you identify that, you lock in on, on that, and that will bring you resources. That will bring you a conversation or something like this to where you can network with the other people in here, especially in Chicago. Right. Man, <laughs> because there's so many silos. There's so many people that they're holding all of their goods and all that. I don't want to share with anybody because I got burned before. Okay, get in line, man. All of us been burned before. <laughs> but now it's about collaboration. It's about forgetting those things which are behind. It's forgetting the pain of, of how I've been burned before. Somebody took my idea. Okay, well, that's not the only idea you ever going to have. It's not the last thing to get burned either. Man, <laughs> so you have to... Focus on, okay, I've got something that somebody will have value. Somebody can get value from my gift and what I enjoy doing. Because what your purpose is, number one, you're already doing it. Yeah. You just have to realize it. Yeah. Now put it in a container and, and share it with somebody else. And then they'll share it with somebody else. And now it gets bigger. And now it's beyond you. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's how that, that works, the preparation and being faithful to that. And once you put your head down and stop looking so much at yourself as an artist, because we all artists, we, we artists. All right, yeah. <laughs> Man, well, it's like the, 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 old, the old adage or the old joke is, you know, the, the artist said, I got to be me. The producer said, just make it wonderful. The executive producer said, how much is wonderful going to cost? Right. <laughs> right. Everybody's looking at a certain thing, and, uh, and from that point, what what are you looking at? What's the what's the what's the end of your life gonna be? Once you define that and stick your flag in the ground, said this is what my life is gonna be. Now you work backwards right. to start making moves toward that. And from that point, that's when you define your success. You know, you know one thing real quick. Go ahead. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say something that, that for me, I think is pretty profound, and that is all you know is all you know. Man. <laughs> you don't know anything more than that. <laughs> so you you can't ever get comfortable, ever. Yeah. You, there always has to be a thirst and desire for more. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I want to become a know-it-all, but you have to operate under the premise that you don't know it all. Right. You, you What you think you know, there's more. Yes, sir. The people that are where you want to be, Know something that you don't. That's why they. That's why they're where they are. Mm -hmm. You know. So, I, I've, I people that are really successful in the industry are the most humble people that you want to meet. Yep. The really successful ones. I'm not talking about the temporary successful ones. I'm talking about the ones that have longevity in their careers. They're, we all know artists that put out a song and you haven't heard from them in years. One hit wonder. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but the legends. There's a commonality to greatness. And that is that they're continually learning, they're continually striving for better, they're evolving with the times, they're evolving with technology. Uh, you know, musicians get put out to pasture by young people a lot because some, some of the older, some of us that are older, I'm 54, you know, if I'm not willing to evolve with things, yeah. that doesn't mean that I lose who I was and what I know, I have to apply sound principles in a new way. And so we have to evolve, but never get to a place where you think you know. You never get to a place where you think you're that good because you're not. You know, there's always somebody that's, that's, uh, that's willing and ready to knock you off that square. Waiting. They're just waiting for you to make a mistake. They're just waiting for you to oh, yeah. not be where you're supposed to be. They're just waiting for you to lose your integrity and your moral standards. They're just waiting for you, mm -hmm. and they're going to knock you off. Uh, but just never, this is really important, never think you know what you, you know, never think you know more than you do because you, you only know what you know. I guarantee you somebody knows something you don't. I'm going to add to that. 
uh, I'm going to play the other side. Uh, be honest with you, uh, making it in the music industry, the odds for making it in the music industry is, is worse than the odds making it to the NBA. Yeah. Everybody not going to make it. It's, it's a lot of people who know way more than we know about this, but just haven't had that opportunity to, to, to project it, you know. Yeah. So so you just got to be patient, you know, and, yeah. and and never get discouraged. Just continue to do what you're supposed to do. That ch- that chance is going to come. It may not be on the level where that you want it, but that will be the start of something, and then you can go from there. So everybody everybody's journey is different. Everybody ending is different. And, and there is no top. Everybody – um, can go further in their career. A lot of the artists, a lot of the top artists, disappear off the face of the earth. You never hear about from them before, but they they elevate themselves. They be, they become ghost writers or stuff like that, and they make more money as ghost writers than they made as artists. So it's always elevation. You know, don't don't. I mean, we all got visions, but it's 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 bigger. It's it's a lot. It's a lot bigger than what you what you can see. You know. Yeah. Um, I want to. Uh Touch on something you said earlier, Dave, mm-hmm. uh, as far as about respecting the business. Because yeah. on the flip side, you know, there's your art, but then there's the business. Sure. Um, what would be some advice that you could give about the music business to everyone, whether it was from something that you learned as a success or for failure? Uh, it goes for everybody. Yeah. Um, for sure. It's, it's, it's respect of, man, holding this, this craft and this opportunity to... Uh, express whatever this uh creative talent that that you have like man it's it's a gift like respecting that first and foremost i think and then respecting um the industry that is tied to i mean because the the real wealth is is people and things that affect people in a positive way uh man that's that's a big responsibility bro like Seriously, um, to have a, a, a gift and talent uh, in anything and t- for it to serve people, I mean, you want it to be your best. You want to, it's like you said, to, to give your best and to uh, work on your craft and hone your craft or whatever. I mean, it's like, well, you know, well, I'm, I'm not really going to learn my part. I'm really not going to learn, learn the words. Well, we can just fix it in the edit. Well, can't we just fix it in the mix? No, that's not being faithful. That's not being true to the spirit of music or the spirit of, of art. And, and I fully believe music is, is a spirit. I think it's, it's uh, something created by God that has multiple facets and um, um, shades to it. Uh, you can get a feeling from a score or from rock or from jazz or to, it has many colors and, and facets to it. Uh, and being respectful to music to, to know that, you know what, I can do better. I can, I could release this song, but look, you know what? Let me let me let me go. It's about death, not width. It's not about uh, how many people like my song. If I know I could do better, I know I can do a better mix. I know I could um, play drums better. I could spend a little bit more time practicing. I've got time, but if I'm gonna make an excuse, well, I really don't have time. Oh, okay, <laughs> then you will only go so far. Yeah. And and it's all in your control. It's all in your control. Yeah, that's I fully believe that as far as re- respecting the game. <laughs> well, well, for, for me, that's all great points, but it's even more simpler than that. It, it it starts like now with you keeping your phone on, answering answering and returning phone calls, <laughs> returning emails in a timely manner, and and knowing how to email people, and showing up on time, and little stuff like that. Because if you can't do it now, you're not gonna go anywhere anywhere to even get to that point. So you got to start with the small stuff now in order to, to get to that point, you know. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. like like this class started at 7. A lot of y'all came late. You know? Real talk. Yeah. I mean, it starts – I mean, I, we don't know everybody's situation, but it starts with a little stuff like that, you know. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, first thing is, 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 you know, when you're at the beginning of this journey, understand – um, some of the opportunities that you that you may have, you, you need to understand where you are. You need to know your worth and what your value is. And if you're new, your value is zero. <laughs> okay, so there's there going to be some things you're going to have to do in order to get opportunities where you where you're able to showcase your true talents and abilities. And I think I think sometimes, you know, getting back to this, you know, mastering your craft and putting in work. A guy like me. 
uh, and these are the gentlemen, you know, one of the things that, that I detest is when young people, or not young, but new people that are new to this, they don't respect, you know, what we've had to do to learn and get to where we are, and you just want me to just give it to you like that. I'm like, go read a book and come back and tell me what it said. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, my I don't endeavor to be the greatest. I endeavor to have respect from the greatest. Mm. I don't. I'm not trying to replace anybody. I just want to respect. Great, great basketball players respect great basketball players. Mm -hmm. Great mastering engineers respect great mastering engineers. And so for me, you know, it's about, you know, in terms of the business, understanding where you are, understanding how you're going to be able to cultivate opportunities. It's like, you know what, hey, man, I've had to do records for people. I say, I tell you what, man, if I can have the opportunity to do it, I'll do it for free. There you go. Yes, sir. I'll do it for free. That's a door. You know, because they're like, it's not going to cost me anything to try it. And if it's bad, I don't have to use it. <laughs> Let me give you a shot. Yep. But you have to, going back to what I said earlier, in terms of mastering your craft, it's like you, you must prepare to walk through that door. Mm -hmm. You must prepare for the opportunity that's going to come. And if you're not prepared, you can't even do it for free. And, if, and even if you get the shot, it's going to be horrible. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you, you know, preparedness is paramount. Understanding your worth, and as you evolve in your career, know your worth, yeah. because there will be people that will use you, yeah, that will yeah. take everything you got that you're willing to give. Yeah, yeah. You know, you get to a point, you just have to know your worth. Um, you know, and and again, these business relationships all start from, you know, the integrity. I demand integrity, I and I and I give it. <laughs> you know, so mm -hmm. what you tell me, I'm expecting it to be what you told me, yeah. and I'm going to give you what I told you. You know, and so um, it, when it comes to business, it's it's it really starts with you. Yep. Um, people will try what they think they can get away with. Yeah. You know, so it it really is important to understand the evolution of business and understand and and not don't just get tied into the gifts per se. Right. You got to understand the whole circle. How do I get? It's like don't talk about work that you're supposed to get paid for and you don't know how much you're supposed to get paid. Right. You know, that's important to understand these things up front. Yeah. If it's free, it should be discussed up front. Mm -hmm. You know, so and whatever it is and what the terms are and how I'm going to get paid and when I'm going to get paid, those are things that, that you, you know, will come to know. But it's important. It's important. So um, in the same way that they're expecting us to be uh, professional and all these other things, we, we, we have to expect the same from our customers. Yeah, really quick. Um, uh, you ain't told. Quick, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I, 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 I told one one person, um, and he's great singer, great songwriter. Uh, he at the time, this is about two years ago. He's about thirty six, so he was like, uh, "Dave, I want to record. You know, get some studio time." I'm like, "Okay." So now, what I learned from from John King, what what I learned is to ask questions up front. Right. Okay, how many songs are we doing? How many, how long are we doing this? How, what do you want from this? What do you want? There's a question. Right. <laughs> what do you want out of this business? What, what do you want for, your, for yourself? Because somebody can't tell you that. There are some things that, that you, they just can't tell you. So if you know what you want, and that's what I asked him, what do you want? Let's say we recorded these four to five songs. Uh, what do you want ultimately? And he was like, well, I really, I want to be signed by, by a major label. Okay, why? He said, well, you know, uh, really, you know, it, it boiled down to, well, because I think that they have um, knowledge and they have things that I just don't have. I'm like, okay, dude, the very thing you're talking into right now, you can go on. It's called YouTube University, bro. Like, you can learn this thing now. We ain't had that. Like, <laughs> you can go online and, and learn that. But you 36 years old. Your oldest kid is seven. Okay, you, you, your wife don't want that. You don't want that. You know what you're going to go through and things like that for a major? Why do you have to be major? Why can't you do your songs now? Do you have this setup? Do you have a YouTube page? Well, no, and I, I really don't check it. I'm like, okay, well, you haven't, you haven't done, you know, the first three steps. But yet you want to be signed to a major label. No diss, but I'm just saying, like, you haven't done first things first. Number one, you don't even know what you want. <laughs> so it's, it started from that. So 
in this business sometimes is telling people you don't need to be an artist. You don't need to be in business. You don't need to be an entrepreneur because a lot of people want what it looks like, but not what it feels like. Yeah, they Big the, difference. The fruits mm. of the labor. <laughs> you know, we, we were saying earlier, I mean, pardon the interruption, mm-hmm. but, you know, people don't know the story behind the glory. <laughs> people don't know your journey. You know, we, we all know, you know we, we know artists, and some of you are fans of artists, yeah. and you don't, you don't know what they had to go through and all the you know, pitfalls and all the disappointments, the hurt, you know, being snapped off telling you, you know, you're not good enough, you know, you suck, you know, or whatever it is, you don't, you don't even understand all of that. You just see the manifestation, mm-hmm. you know, of all their work, the sum total of everything they had to do to get to where they are. You see that, yeah. but you don't know, you know, all they had to go through. You know, people don't understand what we've had to go through to get to where, you know, this little place I find myself. You don't, you don't understand it. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of discouragement. It's plenty of times we want to quit. Man. You know, plenty of time, and it's like, man, you know, what am I, what, what, what am I doing wrong? What do I need to do, you know, to get my shot? You know, what do I got to, you know? And I said something earlier to these guys, and I'm like, you know, and perhaps this might be relative to some of you. If you find yourself starting over all again, it's because you always quit. Quit quitting. Quit quitting. Yeah. You don't have to start over something that you didn't quit. It's a process. It's, it's a process. Quit, yeah. You know, it's like, okay, fine. You know, you got disappointed. You got knocked down. You fell down. Whatever. Just get up and keep moving. Mm-hmm. Learn why you fell down. Learn why you got fired. Understand what went wrong. But keep moving. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. It's just that simple. I feel like um, a, a lot of mistakes are made when people are first starting out because they chase the wrong thing. They chasing money. You know, like like relationships will take you a lot further than money would. So build that. relationships and we're, don't worry about the money. The money will come. The money is the easy part, but it's gonna it's not going to come right then. Yeah. You got to build relationships first. Yeah. It's a reward for solving a problem. Absolutely. Are you are you taking care of the studio you say you want to own? Yeah. Okay. You need to talk to somebody that owns one. Yeah. <laughs> but for, first, first of all, are you taking care of the Casio you got at the house all right, with right. that Radio Shack microphone? All right, just go keep it, 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 it starts there. Seriously, it's going to keep it one hundred. It starts huh? there right. <laughs> oh, because, because nobody's going to trust you with something else if you can't even take care of right. the little stuff that you got at the house. Man. Yeah, I, I say all the so, time, if you if you don't have two dimes to rub together, you're not about to tell me about my money. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to happen. You know, if you don't take care of your own car, how are you going to ask me to borrow mine? Yeah. It's not going to happen. Yeah. You know, so between being ready and being prepared. Yeah. That's one of the things in 2017 I learned. I've been ready since 1992. Y'all remember, I, I got this vision. I've been doing live sound, drummer as well. That's how we met. I'm a drummer as well, doing live sound. I gave up my teens, kicking it going on dates or whatever, to run cables, to learn how to wrap cables, to do live audio, to learn wireless frequencies and things like that, to run this 250-pound snake or speakers in the air or whatever. Hey, no, I can't kick it. And then to wake up to do a conference all day and do do another day and then break it all down. For for little or nothing? Oh, nothing. Oh, goose egg. Zero. Nothing. (laughs) Maybe a meal. Maybe. Yeah, maybe that or whatever. It's but it's one. it's the yeah. love, it's the passion. I know what I wanted, and I still know what I want, and I'm moving toward toward that every day, every day. But it's knowing who are you, what do you want. Those are two questions everybody has to answer. One other thing, I want to say something real quick. I say to people who aspire that are aspiring to get in this into this industry. And I get people all the time, hey, man, can I come sit with you? Can I work with you? You know, that's cool, whatever. And, I, and, and sometimes I will afford an opportunity. Um, but what I tell people is like, look, I'm not about to drive your dream. I'm not going to drive your dream. If you want something, make me know it. Mm. You need to do what it takes. Mm. Don't expect me to call you, hey, man, you busy? You want to come through? You know, let me, you know. No. Nah. That's not how it's going to work. What do I do? I call you like, hey, man, you, you recording something today? I'm going to come over and sit in. Mm-hmm. Exactly. No one is going to drive your dream. Yep. It's not going to happen. Yeah, you, you're the driver. So, you know, if you want to achieve something, you, you, have to do, you have to be the one to make it happen. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the, the easy way to solve that, uh, you study quitting, is start setting short-term goals. Right, Stop trying to leap all the time and go to the top. 
set set a short term goal. Then when you accomplish that, then set another one. Yeah. Then set another one, and before you know it, you'll you'll almost be where exactly what where you're trying to get. It'd be within reach, and, and you know, yeah. it's a whole lot easier that way. Yeah. Now, as far as uh, we're talking about, as far as getting opportunities, walking through the door once it's open. Um, what are some of the greatest opportunities you guys have had, and how did that come into fruition? Well, I, I um, the White biggest, the biggest for me, <laughs> what's that? Yeah, White House. <laughs> no, that's not even the, the biggest for me. Was when I was sitting at home, uh, at my table, and and I got a call, and the call went exactly like this: uh, "Are you home?" I said, "Yes." They said, "How fast can you get to United Center?" I said, "Well, it depends on how fast you need me there." They said, "Well, Prince needs somebody to." to um, take care of his personal piano and all the keyboards on the B stage. I was running out of, I was at the house with my underwear on, putting my jogging pants on, <laughs> running out to United Center, you know. Then you you gotta always be ready, you know. And like, like I didn't know exactly what I was gonna do, but I went anyway, I'll find out when I get down there. I ain't talking about no money, cause you're talking about Prince, you don't worry about no money. You know what I'm saying? You know, then the White House too, but <laughs> I'm talking about Prince. <laughs> <You know? laughs> You know, but, yeah, but but Prince never toured, so I ended up being with Prince for for a year. We would he would like call like the night before he wouldn't call, but production would call and be like, "Hey man, uh, here's your flight information. Yep. We have a we have three shows tomorrow." Mm -hmm. But you not even knowing previously that he had shows. He would just always like do pop up shows. You know, yep. you know. It's but the money was incredible. <laughs> you know, but but you know that 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 was one of the greatest. Yeah. Greatest moments of my life. <laughs> yeah. you know. I, I think for me, um, again, it, it really goes back. We're regurgitating, you know, the process here, but it it is be ready, you know, mastering your craft and being prepared. Again, not that you're gonna know everything, because all you know is all you know. Yeah. yeah. But being ready. So, you know, I was sitting at home, you know, something similar. It wasn't Prince, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I get a call. It's Donnie McClurkin. Donnie was like. You know, I'm I'm really good friends with his MD, but his MD was on an airplane, and his and before his MD got on the plane, he said, "Well, I'm getting ready to get on the plane. Let me get you his number, and you call him." So I'm on the phone. I'm like thinking, I'm never gonna get a Donny McClurkin record, you know, ever. I mean, like, you know, I hope to get a record that's gonna become someone like a Donny or whoever. This man calls me up at home. He said, "You know, I can't imitate his voice, but he's like, I, I need your help. We have something that we need, and we need it in." Tomorrow, <laughs> so, and Trent told me you could do it. I'm like, he did. <laughs> I'm like, and I in my in my mind, I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna get this done tomorrow. But I said, you know what? Send it to me. I um, he sent it to me. Me and my team got on it. In less than 24 hours, he was on the stage with Camberell or some show doing it. And that was that, you know, that opportunity that led to many, many others, you know, to the, it, it led to the Kimberells, it led to you know, Todd Delaney, it led to, you know, all these other artists, for Sean Mitchell and different other artists that I work with. It just, you know, I can't stress enough being prepared and what that can do for your career and having enough faith to walk through the door when it presents itself. Oh, yeah. Because it can be very intimidating what's on the other side of that door. It's like, man, this... Donnie McClurk, and this is Kim Burrell. If I mess this up, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Word travels fast. It does. <laughs> but, you know, you can't be underprepared, you know, absolutely unprepared when those opportunities come. If you're not, if you're not investing in yourself, taking the time to, you know, prepare yourself for what you, what you would like to come, you're setting yourself up for failure. Because that opportunity may, may not ever come again. Because it could be now, yeah, I tried calling said, but he wasn't ready, you know. So, hey, have you ever used said? Yeah, I tried him one time, but nah, you might want to go a different route. Mm. So, somebody told me a long time ago, your your last gig is your audition for your next gig. Yeah. <laughs> Cause wow. that, that's, that goes a long way. Wow. You know. And it starts now with you not even having a gig if you don't have a gig. How, how, what are you doing now? You know, like that goes back to the YouTube videos and all that stuff. You got to put yourself out there, you know? Wow. Um, uh, I remember a, a time during the internship with uh, Steve Hurley, and um, he was working on, he's the one behind CeCe Peniston and all that, uh, her entire career. Like, um, 
at the same time, he worked on a, a local artist named Shante Savage. And that was the record that uh, during my internship that I worked on. Now, this is an unpaid internship through Columbia College. And I was supposed to take Studio Media up north. And I was like, ah, well, you know, man, that's really far or whatever. So out of nowhere, uh, this opportunity, I didn't get a call from Silk Productions. I'm like, who is that? Like, I knew Steve Silk Hurley, but didn't know the production or what have you. Um, so from that point, I ended up, I worked for almost maybe nine months during that internship. And the things that I learned and, you know, going back to, taking care of another man's or taking care of where you are uh, and b before you get your own. So after, with the disciplines that I learned from doing live sound and things like that for Living Word in my church and things like that, I carried that into this studio environment. So now there's a recording studio and there's stuff everywhere. There's cables everywhere. There's records, whatever. So without anyone having to tell me because I love and respect this business and respect recording studio because I just love the, the environment. Going back to the feeling, like I said, when I was six, is respecting that. So let, me, let me organize this stuff. And after a while, start buying, start buying the cleaning supplies, start buying the stuff on the way, getting off of the L train and walking from State Street over to 600 North Fairbanks every day. And through the snow and stuff like that, taking care of their studio, Unpaid internship, right? They started paying me because they were watching. Mm. I didn't know they were watching. But someone is always watching. Always. <laughs> and, and, and through that, then they started calling me because of that. They said, hey, why don't you come upstairs? At that time, it was River North uh, Recorders. And why don't you come upstairs with us? So now they're inviting me to things I wasn't supposed to be in on. Let's go over to Hinge with Craig and Craig Bauer and all them uh, to Hinge where, you know, at the same time, he's working on Kanye's first you know, record and stuff like that. So now I'm starting to meet other people because of mopping. Come on, man. Because of how I took care of his studio and they saw how I was organizing the files in the studios and things like that. So that led me to to something else. So now bringing me to the Shantae record that he was working on, I did not only the pre-mixes, but um, I'm still credited on two songs on that album mm -hmm. as an unpaid intern. That's not supposed to happen, but my preparation and my faithfulness to keeping the studio clean prepared my heart, number one, prepared me for a greater opportunity. You're about to run, ain't you? Man. <laughs> 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 but he, here's the lesson in that, too. In this business, you can write this down if you got a notebook. Get it in writing. Get it in writing. Because everything verbally told to you, you're going to have to get it in writing. Because y'all know, everybody in here, there's been countless stories of people that signed a bad contract and got a deal and that wasn't good for them and this and that. And there's way too much knowledge out here now. There's no excuse in that for that now. Well, well, most of the time, those people be greedy. They see dollar signs. They just sign, just sign on the on the line. That's, That's what that is. So that goes back to what do you want, and 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 knowing what what you're in this for. Yeah. It goes back to motive. Mm -hmm. Why do you want to be in this in industry? Well, it looks great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Part of being in this industry okay. is learning everything you can about it. Yes, sir. Everything that good is. Uh, you can't operate in a silo. Uh, yeah. You know. Learn the business side. <laughs> you know, people get paid to do what we do. And you have to understand how that is. You know, how do you get paid? You know, um, you know, have a bank account. You know, <laughs> be able to accept payment in every method there is. I, I take your PayPal, Seriously. Square. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Cash App, right. Vimo, pesos. <laughs> you no, know, like, you know, you have to be prepared to be able to get paid. To, mm -hmm. You know, for what you do, and sometimes. You know, there's been situations with people I know that didn't get a job because it's like, man, I don't take PayPal. And they were like, okay, I'll call you back. And they didn't get the call back. Yeah, but but it's, it's even that. Some people yeah. don't even have passports. They won't and, hire you for a U.S. gig if you don't have a passport. Right. Because they never know that they even going to go out of the Absolutely. country. Absolutely. They could just pop up and be like, hey, we got a show um, in Europe. Yep. Um, everybody turning their passports. <laughs> What you gonna do? Right. What you gonna do? <laughs> right. Oh, I gotta go get one. How about even, this? Even, okay. even if you never use the passport, right? Get Have you it. a passport. How about this? Please don't let your driver's license get suspended. Yeah. Right. 
<laughs> no, no, seriously. Be, be, because like, uh, it's uh, funny, but it, I mean, it's for a real. A lot of times for me, well, when I, when I first started, like when I was with Keisha Cole, um, they they didn't want to hire like runners for rehearsals, which is common. So I had they they rented us vans, but they designate one of the crew members to drive the crew to rehearsal mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. You got to have a license to be able to drive this vehicle. <laughs> and, and then if they find out you ain't, you ain't got no license, they be like, well, so so what else we don't know? Right, you know, and right. then they start digging, they're going to find something. So have all your stuff in order before before right. you even think about getting a call to do something. It's, 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 it's levels to it. Like, it's so much minor stuff that has to get done before you can even think about going yeah. further. Mm -hmm. well, that's good information to know. Um, so at this time, what I wanted to do is like a real quick, real, real quick Q and A because we got to get this wrapping up and everything. Um, so if anybody had any questions, if you want to step over to the mic, you can do that. Or if you want to sit where you are in your comfortable chair, go ahead and ask. Just real, real, real quick, Cedric. I didn't catch your last name. Kraut. C R C R O U T. Okay, thanks. No problem. You didn't want to know my last name? No. <laughs> <laughs> <Not important>. <laughs> <laughs> I met you last year though. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah, he was next in the back. Can, can um, we? Yeah, go yeah, ahead. I, just for all you guys, mm -hmm. I just wanted to know, um, during your journey in, in the music business, what was the hardest thing you had to say no to? Drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there, for me, uh, if you want to go ahead. No. For me, <laughs> there, there have been, there have been a, a couple of instances where, I literally had to say no as much as I didn't want to. You know, when I say walk through the door and be prepared, even if you can't, you know, do it and all that, that that's to a point. Yeah. If you know there's no way possible, like impossible, for you to provide what's being asked of you, I mean, I'm saying, like, I'm in California and you want me to be in, you know, someplace in the next half an hour as an example. You have to say no. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, some one of the things about small business, not not just this business, but any business, is saying yes to everything. Yeah. Right. You can't say yes to everything. You can't spread yourself. You can't yeah. spread yourself out because now that's going to impact your reputation yep. and what people perceive in terms of your level of integrity, and that 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 precedes you. It goes in front of you, and now it's like, man, you know, this guy told me he was going to have this done, and he didn't get it done. So that that's going to be your job interview. They're going to ask this guy, did you get it done? You knew you couldn't get it done. There's no way possible for you to get it done, but you told them you could get it done. Mm -hmm. I, I, I say the I was just joking about the drugs, you guys. <laughs> just, but but, but um, one of the hardest things in my field to say no to is the artist. Yeah. E even though they can be wrong and they know they're wrong, sometimes you just can't tell them no. So you will get fired for telling the artists know it sometimes, but sometimes you have to stand up for yourself and stand up for what's right, and they and trust that they gonna understand why you said no, you know. So you have to, you have to be careful. I mean, and it's all about how how you say it, and, and yeah. how, you know. So 100%. yeah, that that's that's the hardest thing saying no to an artist. I, I, have, I have an example of one something real quick. There's a um, real quick. a mix engineer, <laughs> probably one of the greatest mix engineers in gospel and R and B. You know, name is John Yash. He sent me a record to master. Well, he didn't send it. The artist sent it to me. And I had a problem with the record. I didn't, this is not an example of me saying, no, this is an example of me saying, I can't be successful with what the artist asked me to do unless I ask John Yash <laughs> to make a change. <laughs> this man is like, I don't know how many Grammys. He can fill the room yep. with his Grammys. Literally. I had to call this man, and I'm a... A nobody. I had to call him and say, Mr. Mr. Yash, yeah, this this is Roger Willis. Um, I really kind of need you to do something for me. Is it okay? I mean, I had I had to have the intestinal fortitude to be able to make that call yeah. because my job was to make my customer happy, mm -hmm. and I wasn't going to be able to make them happy unless I made that change. And so it's not a hardest thing to say no to, but it's the hardest thing that I had to do. Yeah, right. You know, because yeah. I here this man got Grammys. Who am I? Mm -hmm. You know, and he could have been the type of guy that was like, man, I'm John Yash. I'm not changing nothing. Right. <laughs> you know, but I had to I had to look at the task at hand and what I had to do. And there was no way possible for me to be successful unless I made that call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next question. Oh, how do you go about like, like what, what would your advice be towards someone going into the music industry? And, like, 
legal matters and like getting out of like legal trouble. Like, like you know what how you went. You got a warrant, son? <laughs> 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 like, say, like, you got any, oh, okay. like, copyright issues with labels and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you make sure you don't get, like, screwed over? Get a lawyer. <laughs> no. no. I, I would say, again, no matter what it is you do, you know, understand that you don't know everything and seek wise counsel. You know, and that, it, could, it could come from other people in the music industry. It could come from your research. You know, people don't even understand what a copyright is, you know. A copyright is actually established at the time you create the music. That's right. Okay, a copyright isn't like you going to the Library of Congress. Okay, to to be able to sue someone for infringement of your copyright, you must register the copyright. But the copyright is actually created at the time you create the music. But you, mm-hmm. most people don't know that, so you can't sue. You can't get remedy in court, as an example, unless you've registered your copyright. Because if you go to sue them, they're going to you know produce your copyright. The registration of your copyright. If you can't do that, then you can't sue. Mm-hmm. So these are things that you. And the, the wonderful thing about all of this, a lot of this, it's on YouTube. It's on Google. You know, spend some time. Yeah. Say, you know, I need to understand the legal things. I need to understand about the music industry. Google it. Yeah. You know, Google it. Spend some time. You know, uh, investing in yourself because I could tell you, but it's probably not going to sink. And you, you need to kind of take ownership of the things you don't know mm-hmm. and start there and you know the rest will kind of take care of itself. Mm-hmm. So at this time, I know you guys have questions. Um, if they are willing to, they can probably take some of your questions out in the hallway. Um, but at oh, this so time, pretty much. <laughs> 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 you don't got to go home, but <laughs> you can't stay here. But um, so um, I want you guys to let them know where they can, if they do have any questions, I want to get in contact with you. Um, if you have a Facebook, Twitter, uh, anything oh, like that. Some of y'all are like stalkers. I mean, <laughs> you just said you were stalking somebody else. Yeah, man, I, <laughs> I said some of y'all. No, no, I'm just kidding. So if you have an Instagram or anything, where can they reach you at? Uh, I'm on Facebook, um, Roger Willis, real simple. You know, I don't, I'm not all fancy with all of the extra stuff, you know. Um, if you send me a message and it's not too creepy, I'll respond to you. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's some creeps out here, y'all, for real. <laughs> But he, he he's old. He only has one social media. No, I, got, I, got more than one. I got more than one. I just you know I'm like. You know, he don't check the website. I don't really know y'all like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, um, uh, my my Facebook is uh, Cedric Kraut Senior. My Instagram is Cedric Kraut Senior. And um, for you young people, my Snapchat is Cedric Kraut Senior. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just that's too much. <laughs> Uh, for me, um, Instagram is uh, my company, Renewed Mind, MMG. And uh, Facebook is Dave Mitchell, and uh, I'm on those those two. Uh, Twitter is Renewed Mind as, as well. But I do have business We're cards if, if you want that. It is. I checked earlier, and uh, it's still, still kicking. Uh, <laughs> you guys can also reach me uh, via email at um, C... At um, what's my email? Uh, C C R O U T, the number four three, at gmail dot com. Yeah. So that's kraut forty three at gmail dot com. Any questions? I'll be happy to answer for you. And I'll also stick around for a little while too, if you guys want to chat or yeah, have any questions or anything. I got cards too. All right, well, that is all the time we have. And once again, I want to thank our guests uh, for coming and talking to us.